today's Tesla Model Y modification is a really cool one. Hanshou has sent us the air conditioner and multimedia rear display for the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y. And can I say that this thing is jam packed with features. Not only can you control the AC and the heating in the rear seating of your Tesla Model Y or Tesla Model 3, but also this thing has CarPlay inside, which is, you know, a thing for Tesla. But we're gonna jump right into the unboxing and then straight into the car and get this thing installed. First thing you guys are going to want to do is make sure that you open up all of your doors and move your seats all the way forward. And the reason why you guys want to open up all your doors is so that you have as much optimal space to work while removing this. As you can see, the seat would be very close to the display right there. So you want to have as much room to operate and work. So go ahead and move those seats all the way forward. All right, now the next thing you guys are gonna wanna do is from the back seat, this is important, make sure you guys are doing it from the back seat, uh, is turn off your vehicle. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and hit the car icon right there. You're gonna go to safety right there, scroll all the way down, and then at the bottom, you see where it says power off. Go ahead and power off your vehicle and confirm yes you want to power off and it's very important that you do that from the back seat because you don't want to sit in the front seat and power the car back on and that's also why we opened up all the doors so that way we don't turn on the car when we open or close doors so very important so this is a fairly easy install it should only take me about five to ten minutes but the first thing you want to do either you can use the tool that was provided or you can go ahead and just use your hands but you want to take this off and it's all by clips oh that came off very easy it's very easy and all you have to do is undo this clip that's it so this is gone put this to the side the next thing you want to do is go ahead and remove this bottom panel. Uh, let's see, you either can use this tool again or you can use your hands. So let's see. Yeah, it's a little tight for me, so I'm going to go ahead and use the tool. Let me just put that in there. Pry away. And this is why you also want to have these seats. Uh, pushed all the way forward because this is a little tight area so yeah we got that out I'm gonna use my hands the rest of the way to unclip and boom now those clips are gone now what you're gonna do here you see these just gonna take this little piece right here push that in and wiggle that out boom i have some third party accessories already in here that's why it's already a mess but yeah we got that all out and this is where now you're going to take the cable that came with the display get this in there so this only can go in one way so it's really hard to mess this part up but uh you're going to connect this cable in down here That's in, get that right in there. Boom. So next up, you're gonna wanna funnel this cable up and through here so you can connect it to the display from up top. So like I said before, I have a few other modifications that are already funneled through here. So this may be a little difficult for me, but should be fairly easy for you and uh, if it's too difficult, you also can just remove these two screws 
right here. I believe they're two or they're T20s uh, screws. So you guys can remove that to make it a little bit easier. So just gonna funnel that through here. There we go. Got that funnel in beautifully. We're good to go. Now, what you're gonna do now is take your display. Get this out of the plastic. This thing is beautiful. And go ahead and attach the two cables that one you just funneled through and then the one that you disconnected from your original OEM display. So this piece will go right here. A lot of these, there's only one way to do it so you can't really mess it up. And there's that. And then you're gonna take this piece and that's gonna go, here it is. This piece is gonna go to this piece. And again, there's only one way to do it, so you can't really mess it up. Then boom. Sounds like we just turned the car back on once we put that in. And don't be confused by this last wire. There is one more wire that's in the box. And after doing some research, it seems like that is for seat control. So if you wanted to control your seats, you guys could do that. So um, yeah, so make sure you guys tuck all your wires, making sure not to be in the way of the airflow of the vents. So tuck that in there nice and neatly. So make sure all your cables are tucked under nice and neat, not intruding on the airflow. And once you have all that set in stone, go ahead and push this in. that looks great and before I close up the bottom um, I'm just gonna make sure that it works and all you have to do is just go ahead and put your hand on the seat should turn on the car as you can see the screen turned on and it's kind of bright so I don't really see much but let's go ahead and reveal this oh there we go Oh yeah, that thing looks nice. That thing looks nice. gorgeous looking amazing I got that bottom piece back on honestly that's the hardest part for me because like I said I had all those other accessories uh, going through so trying to tuck that in and getting the clips to close all the way was the hardest part for me but that is nothing to do with the screen and nothing uh, wrong with this installation as far as hand shows part um, this thing looks great um, as you can see it shows that I have four doors open like I said, beginning of the install, open all four doors, make this thing a little bit easier for you. And uh, yeah, so you can go ahead and turn those off if you like. Um, right there, you can see it's showing me the battery percentage of the vehicle, 39%. Um, if you look at the front display, as you can see right there, 39%. So this thing is talking directly to the computer in the car. So everything you see will be fairly accurate. Um, it's giving you the same type of display that you would see if you were charging. Um, this looks exactly like the Model S and Model X refresh, uh, the screens that you get in there. Um, so you're getting some top-notch functionality and quality in your Model 3 or Model Y um, without paying the pretty price tag of a Model S or Model X. Um, but yeah, this thing is sick. So as you can see, you guys can control 
your AC. Um, so let's go over to the climate control. Now the one thing that people I usually see get hiccup on is turning this thing on and it seems like it's on but it's not. What you have to do is make sure that the climate is actually on in the car and then you'll actually be able to turn this on and you'll feel uh, something going on there. So you can change the intensity just like you would in the front of the car. Um, you also can turn on your seat heaters. So I'm gonna leave these on just to make sure that they actually work. So yeah, you have full control of the seat heaters back here, um, each seat. So you have the, the left, right, and the center full control. You actually can go ahead and do the intensity, which is the one, two, three little bacon strips there. Um, or you can just turn them all off right there. Beautiful. Um, you can, like I said, you can control your AC back here, turn it on and off, hit the fan icon, and you can see that everything works. It doesn't have that functionality of moving direction um, like it does in the front, but as you can see too, the air vents on here are much smaller than it would be on the OEM, uh, simply because you do have that screen here and you know you are opting for a screen. So I rarely have passengers in the back seat, so that's not really a huge thing. And the car does cool fairly fast as well. Um, but to continue on to the different functions of the car, you have like a little uh, app icon here. You can see all the different things that the car has. You have the internet here. I'm not connected to any Wi-Fi or anything like that, um, but you do need to have Wi-Fi enabled in the car, or you can just use like a hotspot or um, something of that nature to connect to Wi-Fi in the vehicle. It's showing all the doors. Um, it also has Google uh, Play Store, so you can actually download apps into here. So if you want to download games, if you have children and you guys are going on long road trips or things of that sort, um, this may be the thing for you guys. You know, you guys can get Angry Birds and all these different games that are available on the Google Play Store. And the one thing that I think is really dope as well, uh, Speed Play is actually Car Play. What you have to do is go to Bluetooth on your iPhone and search for Speed Play. Connect to Speed Play, then it'll connect to here and it will sync over and then just like that you have CarPlay on your freaking display. So it has everything that CarPlay has. This is a this is actual CarPlay in a Tesla. I think this is the first time I've actually seen it for real in a Tesla. Um, so yeah, you have all your apps on here. Uh, the one I'm, I'm most happy about is Spotify because now you can have your passengers in the back use Spotify and search for stuff on their own without you having to search for it on the main display or them leaning over trying to find it or having them connect to Bluetooth. Just have CarPlay on for them and they have access to everything in your Spotify. So Spotify is fully functional. That's my playlist. You can go through there, find all your stuff. You can search. Um, everything is there, which is amazing. Everything. You can search for everything. Uh, you can ask Siri, you can see what's already in the library. I don't want to play any music because I don't want to get copywritten or anything, but everything is there and it's completely functional, which is sick. Um, you have Waze, you have Spotify, like I said, you have your phone. Um, the only thing I feel like you would need back here for your passengers is either the Spotify and then your climate control. But to continue on with certain functions that you have in the vehicle, uh, as you can see, you have your volume up and down which does show up top, up front, up there. So if I'm volume going up, volume going down, I'm pressing that all right here. Um, play and pause, so don't want to get copyright. Um, but you can hit the next button. It's completely, completely functioning on the car. So I think this would be great if you're like an Uber or Lyft driver, um, which is really, really nice to have. Um, and also your passengers can obviously control the AC back here and the heat warmers. The other cool thing about this, um, as you see these three ports down here, so when we had the OEM piece, you had two USB-C ports, but now you have a USB-A, a USB-C, USB and a USB-A. 
Now this USB-A port right here is data. So if you have a, a thumb drive, a flash drive, you can plug in and put uh, either pictures for whatever reason you want to put pictures in here. You can view them in the gallery right there. Uh, but also if you want to import videos, movies, music, you can put all that on here. So like I said, you can import your own video into this display because it has 32 gigs of internal storage. So if you guys want to import any type of media, you can. So this is a video that's already imported on to obviously show tests and the quality looks dope. I don't think it's quite 4K, but it's probably right underneath 4K. Uh, but it, it looks dope. It's definitely not HD. It's it's probably like 2K or 1.5K. Like it's it's nice. Like it looks really good. The blacks are black. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a director and videographer, so I'm looking at screens all the time. The color rendition is really, really nice. The blacks are black. The whites are white. The reds are red, as you can see in this meat, getting your boy kind of hungry. But yeah, this looks really, really high quality. Yeah, this looks nice. And once you connect the Bluetooth from here to the vehicle, just like how you would connect your phone to Bluetooth or your headphones to Bluetooth, all the audio can now come through the screen or come through the vehicle as well so if you have kids and you want to go on a road trip and you want them to be able to watch their movies or play their games or whatever and have the music and the sound coming through the car you can do that and like i said it is bluetooth so if they have headphones or things of that nature they can just stream it straight from the screen into their headphones which is i don't have kids but i can only imagine that parents would freaking love that not having to deal with hearing um, baby shark or whatever these songs are these days but tons of functionality like I said you can browse the internet uh, you do need to have a hotspot uh, in order for that to work but the only things that I'm really trying to figure out is how to get everything out of Celsius and put it in Fahrenheit I cannot seem to find that anywhere uh, even in the settings maybe I can keep diving through but I cannot find that anywhere so maybe they can upload uh, a firmware update and fix that in the future but that's the one thing I cannot find and just for reference this is a comparison shot this is obviously the OEM and then this is the handshell rear display 7 inch so yeah as you can see the air vents on here are much bigger but you got that big full head right there then you have this right here which definitely looks a lot better to me yes you do sacrifice some airflow but the car does get cool just by all the circulation in here so yeah i think this is a much better option it definitely looks stock it definitely looks oem the quality is very very nice um i'm actually fairly shocked i put up an instagram post right after i did my unboxing and i was saying that it actually looks a lot better in person than it does like in photos um so yeah if you're thinking about checking this out definitely hit that link in the description I definitely do have a discount code for this. T-Vibes1 is the code. Use that for anything you guys wanna purchase over a hand show. Uh, this is a great add-on for your Tesla Model 3 or Tesla Model Y. And just for reference, I have a 2022 Tesla Model Y, and I know that this works for all Tesla Model Ys going back from 2020 all the way up to currently to 2023. Um, the only difference is that the wiring has different colors. So. That's the rear display, seven inch display for the Tesla Model Y. Uh, it's also facing a Tesla Model 3. So go ahead and pick that up today. And if you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed this content, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.